Hi, I'm Jeff Altman, The Big Game Hunter, and welcome to No BS Coaching Advice on Blab.im. I'd like to spend about a half hour Monday through Friday, sometimes it's less, sometimes a little bit more, talking with people about some element of their career, their job search, their business, you know, what's working, what isn't, and try and offer them some no BS. So I'm a professional coach. I've been so for many years and I've helped people, helped more than 1,200 people find work, filled a ton of positions plus consulting assignments. Uh, I'm good at what I do, and I coach people to play their game big. So I'll often start off, as I am today, with a question I got from Quora. And this question is, when do I stop waiting for a job offer? Uh, I've had two interviews in December, and since then, nothing. Most people at that specific office went on holiday the week before Christmas. So how long do I wait? And let me just come back to the window for Blab. There we go. And how long do you wait? Well, don't wait. You know, right now we are mid-January and they've gone quiet. Now, if you haven't emailed them, hi, I haven't heard from you since I interviewed. Just was curious about the position, what was going on. I suspect they will either avoid you or reject you. And both are rejection. So you know, you, they may have been busy. You know, the week is, the year has launched, um, the second week of January. Normally a firm would respond by then. I would just keep on interviewing. If they respond, great. If they don't respond, you're not holding your breath, waiting for another individual, uh, waiting, waiting for this firm as the one firm in all the country that might be interested in you. So, Get out there, start talking to people. It will serve you best rather than waiting for someone who may or may not be interested. And that's true all the time. You know, when, when you're interviewing, rather than waiting for that one special firm, you know, and they may not be so special at the end of the day. After all, someone left them before. So rather than waiting for one firm, keep interviewing. The ideal is to have multiple job offers and have choices rather than, pray, please hire me, please hire me. You never want to be in that position. So that was the first question. And here's another one. How can you find a good CV template? Now, I'll simply say that there's no such thing as a good template. You know the format of what a CV looks like. Don't use a template. Now, one of the reasons is most templates work with frames and frames are repugnant to applicant tracking systems. When I hear someone asking about a, a template, usually it's a junior individual who's a little insecure. And, you know, rather than following a template or using a template, you know, create something of your own that represents you and your experience. It will serve you far better don't use frames. That's those boxes on a resume. Uh, don't use headers uh, or embedded headers, I should say. Uh, all those do, some applicant tracking systems can read them, most can't. And it will cause your resume to be rejected for the simple reason that the ATS can't read it. They can't record you in the system. So rather than manually entering you know, information, what they'll do very simply is reject you. So don't do it. Really, that's simple. Don't do it. Here's a great question I got. What career advice can you give to an inspiring dietitian? Number one, learn how to spell. D-E-I-T-I-T-I-O-N is not how you spell dietitian. And you don't want to be in a situation where you develop a bad habit here. Make sure your stuff is spell checked before you post it somewhere, okay? So the basic advice I would give uh, an aspiring dietitian is while looking for work, start working and trying to build a practice on the side. Most organizations these days, if, when times get tough and they will get tough again, they're going to fire people. And you want to have some money coming in 
uh, as in addition to uh, what you get from a job. This is your fail safe. The fallback position in case you wind up losing your job is many will ha- will have happened to them during the next recession. As it is now, we've never completely come back from the last one. You know, the, the economy or you know, the the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports says we're out of the recession, but I'm not seeing a lot of salary growth, certainly. I'm still seeing the economy repositioning itself for most workers, and there's a lot of insecurity. So have something on the side going for you. you know, don't know what to do? Just start talking to people. Start meeting with people. Um, you'll be in a much better position to be clear about what to do when you start looking for something, uh, when you start developing your practice in order to be effective. So that's my advice for you, the aspiring dietitian. Here's one. <laughs> Is life coaching a growing market? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Life coaching is a growing market. There are opportunities in coaching that are terrific to help uh, individuals and businesses play big. Now, for most of us, we've gotten into bad habits. We work. We drive ourselves hard. And I'm not suggesting coaching is going to teach you how to take it easy, but it's going to teach you and remind you how to have more fun doing what you do and playing your game bigger, being the game changer that you can possibly be, standing up as a leader in an organization and being the change that that organization needs. Are they always going to follow you? No. But a coach will support you by looking at what you want to do, the actions you want to take, the challenges, and then you know, the challenges you may face and helping you evaluate your performance afterwards. It is a great field. It is a rewarding field. I'm not just talking financially. I'm talking about emotionally rewarding as well. So I want to encourage you, you know, yes, become a life coach, but get training. You know, coaching is not, you're not dealing with a friend here. You're dealing with people who need help and relying upon you to support them with their help. And as a result, you always want to be in a position where you're well enough trained to feel more confident in your ability to support people. So yes, life coaching is a terrific field. So there's an article in U.S. News this the last few days. Well, I take it back. It's an older article than that. 21 things hiring managers wish you knew. What horseshit. Excuse my language. You know, we want you to be honest. Duh, we want you to pay attention to details and ask questions. And we'd like you to send us a thank you note and show enthusiasm but not desperation. And know your tell us your real weaknesses. Yeah, right. <laughs> you might never do that. Stupid article. But I want to instead talk with you about what firms look for when they hire. Because I think that's much more valuable to you than that sort of nonsense. So here's what they look for. Competence. Can you do the job? Do you know what you claim to know when they assess you? Are you competent in doing it? Now, most people will think that's the most important quality to have. But in point of fact, that's only one of a series. And we all know of incompetent people who get hired. So we know competence is not the sole or dominating factor for some organizations. Here's another thing, another couple of things that they start to look for on top of competence. Self-confidence. Do you inspire confidence through your manner and demeanor that you're the solution to a need that a firm has? Self-confident people are the ones that are hired because they make an employer feel as though they can be trusted to do what's needed. Character. Do you have character? Are you a character? (laughs) They look for character in an individual. 
it gets evaluated in, in many different ways, some of which I don't care for. But, you know, at the end of the day, they're trying to look for character. Confidence, self-confidence, character, chemistry. How do you fit in with your organization, with your team? Now, this is one I, I certainly don't like because that goes back to the question of fit. You know, how do you fit in? And most organizations I know are completely ill-equipped to assess for fit. You know, they don't use uh, standardized testing. It's all projection on the part of the interviewer as to what you're really like. Because after all, you're on good behavior, they're on good behavior, they don't really know what you're like. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is one of the variables that they work with. Uh, charisma. Are you charismatic? Are you char charismatic people always do better than non-charismatics. And I'll give you an example. When we look at people like President Obama, President Clinton, President Reagan, you know, these are all charismatic personalities who, going back to President Obama when he was running for office the first time, inspired people. They made them made people fall in love with him. You know, he was an absolute delight on the stage. You know, he and Michelle Obama were wonderful together uh, as they presented. And you know, when you think about it, whether it's politics uh, or things that you agree with or not is irrelevant. They gave he, President Clinton, when he ran the first time, President Reagan when he ran gave voters the feeling that they could solve problems. So when you get out there, you also want to create that feeling because ultimately when you add all this up, competence, self-confidence, character, chemistry, charisma, these are the variables that go into leadership. These are the things that firms look for in personal leadership when they're trying to evaluate people and see whether they'll be successful in their organization. So, yeah, you could pay attention to these other things that I mentioned earlier. You know, you know uh, do you have an objective on your resume? Do you chat, pro chat professionally with people when they phone interview you? You know, you know, are there references that we can check that will say wonderful things about you? Of course, there are going to be references that will do that. But at the end of the day, they look for competence, self-confidence, character, chemistry, charisma. That's an optional one, but that's the ideal. Charisma, all adding up to personal leadership. Looks like we're having a shy day today, so... Uh, I him you join me in the future on blab.im. You, you know, join the conversation. Uh, join a conversation. Grab an open seat. Let's sit down and talk. I'd love to coach you playing your game big. If you want to find out more about my work, my coaching site is nobscoachingadvice.com. Uh, you can see some of my videos if you click the encouragement tab. Uh, I've written a couple of articles as well. My job search and staffing related site is thebiggamehunter.us. No matter what, I just want you to hear. I want to help you play big. Hope you have a great day. Take care.